uh, <clears throat> we can quickly go through. I mean, other two are pretty easy. <clears throat> Implement the risk responses. So once you have done the risk responses and uh, once you have you as a project manager know what are the risk responses to do uh, for each and every risk that when they trigger. Uh, so it's a matter of during the executing process, during the project process, implementing these risk responses that you have already identified. So <clears throat> uh, nothing much on that to explain. So your risk register will be the main input, obviously. You're looking at your risk register. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, using your interpersonal skills, Pushing the risk response is your your baby, and uh, do the and, and uh, you looking at the risk, risk register, you can <coughs> uh, do the necessary risk response. So then the risk response will sometimes trigger some changes in your once again, and uh, when, once you're really actually actually um, uh, using the response, uh, there can be again some changes in your timelines. And also there can be changes to these purchase documents. Uh, controlling, <clears throat> again, uh, periodic controlling of this, uh, of the entire risk process. Every six months you try to do an audit and see whether the risks are still there, uh, whether you need to update the risks, uh, whether again you have to assess the probability and the risk, as I told you, uh, whether those risks are coming closer to the uh, risk triggering point, whether there's, those risks need to be ranked up, uh, whether those risks are dormant, uh, and now those risks are not there, so you need to rank down uh, in the risk register. So uh, risk reassessment, reassessing of the current risk is really required on a periodic basis. So basis of periodic review is, as we, if you can remember, it was in the risk plan, uh, how frequently the risk is getting reduced. Uh, is, uh, the risk is getting reviewed. Who is going to do it? Maybe your enterprise risk team on behalf of you is um, helping, um, will team up with you to do the re-risk assessment. Uh, close any outdated risk, maybe certain risks are now, although we identified that risk, so now they are dormant and, and they are not no longer valid. Um, sometimes there can be new risk, obviously, and once the project goes on. So those new risks have to come in and again re-ranked with the already ranked risks. So there can be risk audits <coughs> by the risk divisions uh, to examine uh, how, how effective you as a project manager, how effective you have been using the risk responses that have been agreed upon with the stakeholders, uh, how effective is the risk management process, uh, and uh, uh, so there can be you can hold separate risk audit meetings with the project team. So the risk there maybe your audit team, your internal organization audit team will do risk auditing um, with your project team. How well you have been tackling this risk that you have already identified. Um, <clears throat> if you can remember in our in our cost, uh, we we talked about earned value analysis where the uh, there's a variance, the actual cost, and minus the variance. Uh, uh, the actual um, variance, the uh, the, uh, the planned variance and the uh, the earned variance. So you these are some of the techniques that um, on monetary terms uh, that you can do uh, earned value analysis to see uh, how because if there is a huge variance, that means you have let your budget to go out of control. There are certain risks are there, and also. Uh, uh, you can actually compare your project with your uh, compare your project with your expected timelines, expected um, um, expected technical um, even technical benchmarking. Um, maybe uh, your expected defect rate for your quality. You had an expected defect rate, so whether your whether your current defect rate is lesser or e e go greater than the expected defect rate, and then, when, when the delivered defect rate is. In, in, greater than the expected defect rate, defect rate, so that means something wrong with the quality process, so there's a risk. Uh, maybe some, 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 some transaction times, so the quality part, technical parameters that we have mentioned uh, to see whether uh, those risks are there or not. And sometimes uh, 
you can revisit your contingency reserves how much of money is there in your contingency reserves? how much of funds are there in your contingency reserve uh, how much of um, time is there in your contingency reserve in your schedule uh, uh, in, in your schedule uh, so uh, how much of time is remaining so you have an assessment of how much of risk is remaining it's maybe of now 60 percent down of your project uh, still there are as per your risk register there are about 30 40 risks are there upcoming risks uh, is according to those risks re-risk assessment uh, is the contingency reserve balance and that is the time the reserve time that is there on the balance cost the money the budget is there in the contingency service is adequate to tackle those um, upcoming risks so that wise you can control your risk so if, if there is if the contingency service is not enough Maybe you have you you have balanced uh, three weeks uh, contingency reserve, three weeks of manpower, man man uh, man man days uh, of contingency reserve. But depending on the risk register, newest risk register, uh, the remaining risks uh, you need about um, another four weeks. So that means the contingency reserve is not enough. So so these uh, and these what do you call these reviews can be done uh, periodically and see whether you are in control of the risks. So for completion's sake, um, I have included a framework of risk management. Uh, so this is what I spoke to um, um, earlier also. I hope in your organizations also there is a risk management uh, team or risk management department. In financial organizations in Sri Lanka nowadays, every bank and every financial organization has a risk management team. It's a compulsory from the central bank. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so do we? Uh, so it is. It's. It's nothing much. It's basically each individual department has its own risks, and e earlier each individual department was tackling their own risks. Uh, for each department, each risk may be high. For technology department, certain risks may be high. For HR department, people leaving an organization or your the leap percentage, uh, what do you call that? Uh, the uh, people leaving the organization, the uh, turnover percentage will be a high risk for them. Uh, so financial, maybe the risk of um, the loan, number of loans that the company has is a high risk for the financial manager. So each department has its own risk and each department of ranking of their own because depending on the attitude of the risk, attitude of each person was ranking. So what they did uh, from inter-enterprise risk approaches, they brought into a centralized location. And all these risks are now ranked in, in one sheet. So technology has to justify why his cybersecurity risk is more greater than the financial return risk. Uh, it has to, um, have to stand up and rank why his labor turnover risk is more than the uh, uh, more than the um, uh, risk of a new competitor, uh, reducing our sales. So, by this cross domains, cross uh, cross each domain, uh, you, you as a senior management or a CEO or the board of directors will definitely see what the top risk of your company. So, although you in a silo, you thought uh, you thought uptime maintaining uptime of your system 99.9 .9 is a huge risk for you sometimes when you come to the end when you put your risk into the into the entire bucket of risk of all other divisions it can come number two or number three of the entire organization uh, and then again uh, depending on the controls that you have say for your up time you have good controls you are good expert um, um, uh, expert guys um, involved looking after it every morning you have a checklist uh, you look the health of the system so those are the risk response and risk mitigating activities that you do on a daily basis because of that you are ranking down the technological uptime risk you are ranking down in an overall picture and because you have good controls over that and maybe uh, the new competitors risk uh, of taking market share may be the highest risk of the organization at this moment of time. I'm telling you at this moment of time, so because every moment this risk landscape is 
changing for an enterprise. So you as a project manager, uh, maybe your project risks, actually your project risk, I mean, if, you are, if, you are, if you are a project manager under, under technology, uh, even in my organization, the key project risks come under first in the technology risk sheets and, uh, and that goes into enterprise risk sheet. So if you are, if you are say you are, you are, you are in a co-banking uh, co implementation project and there's a risk of a uh, project getting delayed, and when you when you put it into the en entire enterprise risk management framework, maybe sometimes they will rank at a very high risk because maybe we need the co-banking upgrade to ta to uh, to target the the new competitor who is coming um, who is challenging us because we need those system features fast and fast and quickly to um, to tackle um, tackle the other um, bank who is trying to. Overtake us, so the 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 co banking system project delay might be one of the number one number two risk in the entire organization. Uh, so so likewise, your project management risk will also come into the enterprise risk management, uh, entire the, the final risk management sheet, which is the enterprise risk management sheet. Right. So this is just a typical governance governance structure that. Uh, um, that is there. So basically, <clears throat> your board and executive directors are there, and usually you have the, uh, the risk management uh, team committee. You are maybe chief risk officer and the CFO are integral part of these things. Uh, it all depends on the how, what type of organization. It might be more skewed to as a financial organization. Then a view heads are here, and uh, and then usually. Uh, uh, Mm, uh, the risk um, and the, the 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 risk management division usually reports to the the audit and or the board appointed audit audit committee. Uh, so in our organization, also it it, it um, uh, reports to the board appointed audit committee. And sometimes uh, <clears throat> uh, we have in our organization what we have implemented is that uh, we have risk uh, risk uh, what do you call it, risk representatives. In each division, so each division, one member is is trained. In my division, technology division, the the information security manager is trained to handle the risks. So he understands the risk of as information security, the technology risk, as well as in a global landscape, the enterprise risk. So uh, uh, so in each division, we have a risk representative, so that so that the escalation will happen. To the risk um, risk committee, if there's a risk happening. Okay, that brings to an end to the risk management. Uh, hope you got a clear picture.